From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your evening update. Dennis's Heating and Air Conditioning is Northern California's premier heating and air conditioning contractor. From residential housing, large commercial projects, installation to repair, sheet metal fabrication, and everything in between, we are your go-to heating and air conditioning specialist. Well, if you've been following Weather NorCal for a while, I hope you know that there's a free Weather NorCal app. And if you didn't know it, now you do. All you got to do is go to your phone, go to your app store, go to the Google Play Store, depending on what kind of phone you have, search for Weather NorCal. And then you will see this logo. Tap install and you've got the app for free. It has everything Weather NorCal has to offer from Turtle Bay Wonderful World of Animals to the weather update that you're watching right now to even the live 24-hour streaming channel. All right, so the fire danger remains moderate to high for the weekend. The good news is I do expect that fire danger to drop for the second half of the weekend, so it's going to get a little bit better here. There's going to be a slight temperature drop this weekend as well, but still above average highs for most of us, including the mountains. But we do expect a more mild start to the work week, so temperatures drop even more by Monday before we go from here to here. We go from here to here, all right? That's what we're looking at here. So we got bigger heat coming in for next week. We're gonna talk about that in much more detail here in a second, but let's take a look at your neighborhood outlook for tomorrow. So again, we're dropping your temperatures by a few degrees, but not by much. It's still gonna be pretty hot out there in the valley. Temperature is mainly in the 80s for the higher elevations and around 60, give or take, for the coast. So the winds, that's the key factor here. Let's talk about the winds. They've been up and down all week long. We've been gusty winds at times, high fire danger as a result. The good news is tomorrow morning, for the most part, look at this, the winds are not that bad for most of us. So if you're in the valley, just keep an eye on those winds. If they're not that bad, this is going to be your best bet to mow any of that drier vegetation. Because after tomorrow morning, through the day, look at the winds, especially the west side of the valley, we're seeing some gusty winds again, 20 and even over 30 miles per hour. However, look at the coast, not that bad, but we do have some pretty strong winds coming in from the west for the eastern mountains, including Modoc County. Now, going into Sunday morning, same situation. Look at the winds. For the most part, they're dying down, a little breezy out towards the west side of the valley. But then, as we go into Sunday afternoon, there it is again. Winds picking up out of the north, northwest, especially out into Tehama County. Still some strong winds coming in from the west for the eastern mountains, but instead of a north wind for the coast, more of a south, southwest wind for the coast upwards of around 20 miles per hour. So the humidity is another factor that we look in. It looks pretty dry for Saturday. This is why our fire danger will be fairly high on Saturday. Gusty winds, low humidity, heat, and it's not a good thing. But as we go into Sunday, look at the humidity levels. They're getting higher, 20, 30, even upwards of 40% in the valley. That's gonna be a big help for our fire weather risk because the fire weather risk takes into, fact, it takes into account the temperature, the humidity, and the winds. There it is on Saturday. We saw the gusty winds. We saw the low humidity. That's why our fire weather risk is high for most of us in the valley for Saturday. But Sunday, notice this. Yes, we got the north wind, but they're not as strong. And number two, humidity levels are up. We saw that, right? So as a result, we're in the moderate range for that fire weather risk. So it looks like conditions are improving when it comes to fire weather. Okay, so we have the heat, the warmer air. That is moving on out over the weekend. Now, it's still going to be warm, as I mentioned. The coolest air will be to our north, but this is basically just kind of keeping that heat, the, the warmest air, down to our south. Now, the coolest will be on Monday with a high of about 85 in the valley, but then by Tuesday, high pressure starts to build in. We go from 85 on Monday to about 100 degrees for parts of the valley on Tuesday. It gets even hotter for your Wednesday and Thursday. That's the peak of the heat wave around Wednesday or Thursday, and there it is right here. But here's the key to just how hot it will get for this heat wave. What we're looking at right now is the GFS, the American Forecast Model. Now, I've been showing you this and telling you about this the last several days. You see, the center of the bubble of the heat is around the Four Corners region, right about here. This is where you have the hottest temperatures. As you go into the outer perimeter of the, of the ridge of high pressure, away from the center, the temperatures start to drop. Not as hot heading into the outer fringes of that ridge of high pressure. That's where we are. This here would support temperatures of about 100 to 105 degrees, maybe just a little bit warmer in some spots for the valley. However, if we were to look at the European forecast model, that center is over here, and that would support temperatures more like 110 plus. So it depends on which model you look at, 
and there's still a lot of uncertainty in that. So keep watching over the weekend into next week because we'll have a better idea just how hot it will get. Bottom line, it's going to be hot next week, especially by Tuesday through the end of the week. But by Friday, this will start to shift eastward and the cooler air will begin to move in closer and we should start to see our temperatures begin to drop as we get towards the end of next week into that next weekend. And you can see that in the temperature trend. There's that cooler weather on Monday, goes up, peaks around Wednesday, Thursday. We take you into the mountains, just Alturas, for example. You see how it drops down to uh, 70s on Monday, peaking on Wednesday, Thursday, dropping again by the end of the week into that weekend. Not quite the same trend for the coast, but we are seeing those warmer temperatures as we go into Monday, thir Wednesday, Thursday, and the temperatures will start to drop again after that. Now, with all of that being said, there is an excessive heat watch for the Sacramento, northern Sacramento Valley and the surrounding foothills. In effect, but it won't take effect until Tuesday, Tuesday morning through Thursday evening. Now, the weather service is forecasting highs between 95 and 105 degrees. This would mean that they're actually agreeing more with the GFS, or the American forecast model at this point. So even with the not as hot solution, we still have the excessive heat watch in store for us. All right, so that's what's going on here as we go for Tuesday through Thursday. So what's the criteria for the Weather Service to issue these advisories, these watches, these warnings? Well, for the excessive heat watch, it's issued within 24 to 72 hours when the risk of heat, when the risk of a heat wave increases, but timing is still a little uncertain. And that's essentially what we're looking at here, right? We're still not 100% sure just how hot it will get. We just know it's going to get hot. And the timing of that is going to be around Wednesday, Thursday. An excessive heat warning is within 12 hours. And that's when we start to see the temperature soar even higher. All right, so let's go and take a look at the National Weather Service's heat risk. Now, we're going to start you off with Tuesday. That's when the temperatures start to increase. Oranges indicate a moderate risk. Reds indicate a major risk. That's next Wednesday. That's the peak of the heat wave, at least for the valley but it's still gonna be quite hot on Thursday of next week. We still have a lot of reds on the map here. So what does this mean? Well, in years past, I've reported these and I've had a lot of people just kind of shove it aside and, and quite honestly, even laugh at it. They, they, they consider something like this laughable. Here's what I wanna to say to that. For those of you that have lived in this area for a long time, I've lived here for 25 years, I'm healthy. I can handle this kind of heat, but it's still important to take care of yourself during this heat, even when it's only 100 to 105 degrees, because yes, we know it can get up to 110, 115, 120 around here, but it doesn't happen all the time. So even when it's only 100 to 105, that's still dangerous, and we have to be, take care of ourselves, even when you're healthy, okay? And especially if you're not healthy, uh, elderly, young children, right? We need to take care of them and watch them during the day. And many of you have access to air conditioning. Some don't. And that makes it even more dangerous because they can't get that relief that many of us can. So this is why the National Weather Service issues these heat risks and, and has this kind of categories here for you. So you can have an idea. But again, if you're he healthy, you have access to air conditioning, this really doesn't mean much to you, does it? But if you have to work outside, it does mean something. Drink plenty of water, take breaks, get in the shade when you can, all right? So these are all things you've got to take into account. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about chances for rain in there because there are going to be some chances. Now, we do have the fog returning tomorrow morning for the coast, otherwise sunny skies to start off. I think we'll get a veil of some high clouds for most of Northern California for a good portion of the day, but it's dry on Saturday. We take you into Sunday. We've got a system that'll clip Northern California. And I think that as we go through the day on Sunday, we may see a few showers for Del Norte, Siskiyou County, Modoc County, even maybe Northern portions of Shasta County as well. Is this gonna be a big deal? No, but you'll notice kind of another veil of thin clouds, especially for the valley southward. Now the long range, we go into Monday, there you can see the chances for showers surrounding the valley. So all of the mountains, all of the coast, seeing a chance for showers Monday, but I think it should remain dry on Monday for the valley with partly to mostly cloudy skies there. And then dry for the rest, mostly dry for the rest of next week with of course that heat coming in by Tuesday through the end of next week. So your wave heights, they are finally beginning to show signs of dropping as we go into your Saturday. So if you do need to be on a small boat, looks like you're in pretty good shape. And then we'll probably see another slight increase as we go into your Sunday. So looking at your marine forecast, 
Uh, there is still a small craft advisory through Saturday morning, but by Saturday afternoon, that will be allowed to expire. That's why there are no alerts at this point. And winds generally from the northwest at about 5 to 10 knots. All right, your forecast for tonight. Temperatures low to mid 60s for the valley. With the calmer winds, it should be a bit cooler for some of us in the valley. We're talking 40s and 50s though for the higher elevations, mid to upper 40s along the coast. All right, let's take a look at your neighborhood forecast for Trinity County. Temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. It is going to be warm, but not as warm as it was today. We've got that chance for showers for Trinity County on Monday. Now for, sad, for Sunday, we've got a chance for showers for the coast. Another chance for showers on Monday, dries out for the rest of next week. For tomorrow, should be dry under mostly cloudy skies, at least along the coast. Now the inland areas, I've got you dry on Sunday, better chances for showers on Monday, drying out and warming up for next week. Your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast, I've included that chance for showers on Sunday, once again Monday, drying out for Tuesday through Friday, and warming up as well. Modoc County, there's your chance for Sunday, Monday as well back in the low 90s by Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. How about the Eastern Mountains? I've got you dry on Sunday, but Monday you've got the chance for showers, warming up into the upper 90s by Thursday, it looks like. So quite uh, the warm temperatures, even for the higher elevations. Now your Valley Neighborhood Forecast brought to you by NorCal Tractor. Temperatures could even drop down in the low 90s for some of the cooler spots in the valley. But again, you see those temperatures are really starting to increase. 100 degrees or higher by Tuesday. The peak of the heat wave at this point for the valley looks to be on Wednesday. But you can see it for us for tomorrow, 94 for Redding, 94 for Cottonwood, 88 for Whiskeytown, and Lakehead, a high of about 91. So we look at that seven day outlook for Redding. We're gonna be in the low to mid 90s throughout the weekend. Then we see a nice drop in our temperatures, mid 80s by Monday. And just when you thought, hmm, not a bad week, right? Well, we get back up to 100 degrees on Tuesday, which will most likely uh, be, you know, one of the hottest we've seen so far for the year before we get even hotter by Wednesday. That's the peak. And then temperatures should start to drop slightly as we get into the, the end of next week, into that next weekend. 